G'day everyone, let me show you how to realistically mock up the cover of this book and make it easily editable in Photoshop. My name is Hoi and in this video I'll walk you through how to use the perspective crop tool, warp objects, integrate your design with the book cover to make it more realistic by using blend if and explain the behind the scenes on how displacement maps work. If you want to follow along you can use the exact images that I'm using, the links are in in the description. Okay, so to get started, let's open the file that we'll be using by going to File, Open, navigate to the folder where you've got your image saved, click on the file and press Open. I'm going to fit this to screen by pressing Command-0 on my keyboard or if you're using a PC, Control-0 and that will make it a little bit bigger so we can see the whole image. Now the first thing that we notice is that the book is on an angle here. What we want to do is just to make it straight. So we can do that by going to the perspective crop tool. Now the crop tool is in the tools panel here. By default the normal crop tool is shown so what we need to do is click and hold on your mouse to bring out these options here and then we'll select perspective crop tool. What the perspective crop tool does is remove the perspective from the picture so in the end we'll get a straight image. So let's bring our cursor to the book cover here and I'm going to zoom in by pressing option on my keyboard and scroll wheel mouse up. On a PC it's alt and scroll wheel mouse up. Let's click on a point here and then just drag it along and then just drag it down. Now to scroll down a bit more so you can see the rest of the image, press spacebar on your keyboard and your cursor will change your hand and then just click on your mouse and then just drag down so you can see the rest of the image. I'm going to let go of my spacebar and my mouse and then it will return to the crop tool. So I'm going to just put a, another point here and then another point here and when you press the third point it will join up with the first point that you've made. I'm going to confirm that by pressing return on my keyboard. I'm going to fit it to screen by pressing command 0 on the keyboard, control 0 if you're on a PC. So you can see here the perspective crop tool has removed any perspective from this image. So now we see a straight picture. So what we need to do now is simply copy this by pressing command A on your keyboard to select all. That's control A if you're on a PC. Now that will select everything as shown by the marching ants. Let's copy it to our clipboard by pressing command C or control C if you're on a PC and then we can deselect that by pressing command or control D on our keyboard. Now that we've got this image on our clipboard we can return back to our original image. Let's press command Z or control Z if you're on a PC to just go back a few steps. I'm going to fit it to screen by pressing command 0 or control 0 if you're on a PC and we're back to where we started. Now the only difference is that we've got the straight image of the book cover in our clipboard in the computer's memory. So what we need to do now is to copy it back onto this image. We can do that by pressing command or control V and so we can see it a little bit better I can turn off this background layer and this is what we've copied back onto the image. Now I'm going to remove the contents of this layer here and you might be saying why did we go to that effort then? The reason why we went to that effort is because we used the perspective crop tool to get the aspect ratio of this. We don't actually need the detail in here. The detail is retained in this background layer here. Let's press command on our keyboard or control if you're on a PC and let's just click on this thumbnail and that will make a selection around this book cover here. I'm going to convert this selection to white. Now I have white as my background color. If you don't have either the white as your background or foreground color, you can press D on your keyboard to set it back to default colors. Because white is my background color, I'm going to press command delete on my keyboard. That's control backspace if you're using a PC to fill the selection with white. Let's deselect that by pressing command or control D on your keyboard. And let's rename this layer so we can keep track of it by double clicking on this 
and typing in something like cover and press return on the keyboard. Let's now make a smart object out of this. Now what a smart object is, is basically a wrapper that protects your original object. So when you apply effects on top of it, you can easily go back and change the settings of those effects because they're not burnt into the image. So let's go to the empty area here and right click and select convert to smart object. This is the symbol for a smart object. So just make sure that you've got this icon here to make sure that you've got it as a smart object. Now let's turn our background layer back on by pressing this eyeball here. And the next thing that we need to do is to shape this white rectangle back onto this book cover here. Now the problem at the moment is that the white is opaque. We can't see through it. So it's going to make it harder for us to shape this layer back onto this cover. We need to reduce the opacity by going to our layers panel and just sliding this to a level that we can see. I'm going to change my cursor to the move tool. I can go up to here or press V on my keyboard. Let's transform this by pressing Command or Control T on the keyboard. That will bring out the transformation controls. Let's press Command on Control while you hover over one of the controls. The cursor will change to a white arrow. And while you've got Command or Control selected, let's drag the corners and then drag it down to one of the corners on the book. Let's do that for each of the corners here. Now I'm being a little bit loose because I'm going to zoom in after I've got these roughly in place. And to zoom in, I'm going to press Option on my keyboard. That's Alt on a PC and then scroll wheel mouse up. I'm going to refine my transformation by pressing Command on my keyboard, Control if you're on a PC, and then just clicking it to make sure that it's where we want it. Now this doesn't have to be exactly where it is, so don't spend too long on the precise location. I'm going to pan across by pressing space by my keyboard and just dragging my mouse over here, and I'm going to do the same thing. Once you position all the four corners, you can accept that by pressing return on your keyboard or going to this check mark here. I'm going to fit it to screen by pressing Command-0 on my keyboard. That's Control-0 if you're on a PC. And we'll just bump up this opacity back to 100. Now the next thing that we need to do is to design our cover. Let's double click on this icon here to enter the smart object here. Let's fit it to screen by pressing Command-0 on the keyboard. That's Control-0 if you're on a PC. And we're going to have white text and white graphics on this as you saw in the intro. So what we need to do is to make a black background so we can see the white text that we're going to be typing. Let's go to our adjustment layer icon here. Let's go up to solid color and go down to black and then press OK. I'm going to move this solid color here all the way down. I'm going to rename this by double clicking on it and typing in background. Now the top layer is white and what we need is a transparent layer. So I'm going to click on this and press delete on my keyboard. I'm going to create a new layer by pressing on this new layer here. So now it's time to create our design. I'm going to start off with text by pressing T on the keyboard to bring out the text tool. I'm going to click once on the canvas. I'm going to change the color of my text. At the moment I've got a black. So black on black is not a good look. So I'm going to click once here. I'm going to change it all the way to white and press OK. I'm just going to delete the placeholder text and type something like my great novel. You can type in whatever you want. If you need to change the font or the size of your font, just select it all and go up to your font options here and just select any font that you want. I'm going to go for BBAS. You don't need to follow me exactly. You can use your favorite font. I'm going to increase it a little bit here. Something like 245 will do. I'm going to commit that by pressing this check mark here. I want to move this so this text is center. So I'm going to grab my move tool by pressing V on my keyboard. I'm going to just click on that and just move it to the center. Now you see that the smart guide has come up and snaps the text into place. So I know that center in relation to the layer. Now if you don't have those guides, you can go up to view and just make sure that extras is ticked. 
and go down to show and make sure that smart guides is checked. You also want to make sure that it snaps. So what snap does is that when you get close to the guide, it would actually just automatically snap to it. So you don't have to be that precise with your mouse movements. So just make sure that snap is checked and snap to layers and guides are also checked. So I haven't got layers on, so I'm going to just check that as well. I'm going to duplicate this text here by pressing option on my keyboard and clicking and dragging. If you're on a PC, it's alt and drag. Now you can see that I've got latitude, but I want to make sure that it just goes straight down. So I hold shift as well on my keyboard. And then I'm going to let go of my mouse to accept that. I'm going to select all of it and just type over it. Hoi T fam. I'm going to center that and then just press the check mark here. And I'm going to move it down somewhere here. And the reason why I've moved this down is because I've got a graphic here that I'm going to place. Now the image is also in the description below. So after you've downloaded it, go to File, Place Embedded, click on the image and press Place. I'm going to resize it proportionally and the center by pressing Shift and Option as I drag. That's Shift and Alt if you're on a PC. That will resize it from the center. And I'm going to accept that change by pressing return on the keyboard. Now you notice that the color of this is blue. If I just turn off the black solid color, you can see that it's got this darkish blue here, which looks pretty good actually. However, it won't work for our design. Now we can change the color of this graphic by going to this layer style option here and then go up to color overlay. Make sure that your color is white. If it's not white, just click once here and just select white and press OK. Make sure that your blend mode is normal and your opacity is 100%. Let's press OK. I'm going to turn back on the black background so we can see what we're dealing with. Now you can turn on and off the white overlay by pressing here. That will return it back to the original color. I'm going to turn it back on by pressing the eyeball again. And the last thing I'll do is I'll just make a border here. Again, the border is one of the images in the description below. So once you've got that downloaded, go to File, Place Embedded, click on the image and press Place. Now the link that I provided provides you a number of options in regards to the format you want to download. It offers PNG or SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic. I recommend downloading the SVG because when you scale up the SVG, it doesn't lose the quality, unlike the PNG. So I'm going to press place here. And I'm not sure whether you've seen it, but it has placed it. But the problem is that it is in black. Let's resize that first, and then we can convert that to white a little bit later. I'm going to resize that proportionally and from the center by pressing Shift and Option. And that's Shift and Alt if you're on a PC, and then just clicking and dragging out. And then to scale it just top and bottom, I'm going to press Option on my keyboard. That's Alt if you're on a PC, and then clicking and dragging it from here. And that will resize the tops and bottoms simultaneously. So something like this. I know it's difficult to see, so I'm just using the blue outline as my guide. Once I'm fairly OK with it, I'm going to release my mouse and keyboard. Let's confirm that change by pressing return on our keyboard. Now, because we've resized it, we can't actually see what's going on. But because this file was in black, all we need to do is to invert the color. We don't need to have a color overlay. So to invert it, make sure that your border layer is selected. My one's named Vintage. And then press Command or Control I on your keyboard to invert the colors. Now, the reason why we couldn't use Command I on the heart layer is because it would be inverting blue. And the inverse of blue is not white. The inverse of blue is yellow, actually. Now, the design is actually done. So what we need to do is to remove the black background so it doesn't bring it over to the mock-up image. So let's turn it off by going to our Layers panel. And now we need to save this file. You can do that by pressing Command S on your keyboard. That's Control S if you're on a PC. Let's go back to our original image 
and there you have the mock-up. Now at a distance it looks fairly decent. However, if I zoom in by pressing Option on the keyboard and scroll wheel mouse up, that's Alt and scroll wheel mouse up if you're on a PC. Now there are a number of things that we need to do to make it more realistic. The first one is if I zoom in a little bit more is that the text and the graphic is a bit too sharp, is a bit too bright and it just seems that it's sitting on top of the book cover instead of being integrated into the book cover. So we need to somehow integrate the white layer with the book. And we can do that using two techniques. One is blend if and the other one is displacement maps. If you don't have any idea what these are, don't worry, I'll walk you through it. I'm going to zoom out by pressing option on my keyboard. That's Alt if you're on a PC and then just scroll with mouse down. And then the next obvious thing is that the graphic is coming over the finger here. So we need to mask that out. That's a relatively easy thing to do. So we'll do that last. I'm going to fit this image to screen by pressing Command 0 on my keyboard. That's Control 0 if you're on a PC. And let's just talk about what displacement maps are and blend if and how they can integrate this graphic a little bit better. To create the displacement map, we'll use a displace filter, which allows you to map one image on top of another by using the luminance value of another. So if that doesn't make sense, let me zoom in a bit by pressing option on my keyboard, scroll with mouse up. So you can see the cover has some texture on it. So what we can use the displacement map for is to follow the contours of this texture. So I'm going to zoom back out by pressing Command-0 on our keyboard. That's Control-0 if you're on a PC. To make a displacement map, we need to duplicate this background layer. Let's right-click on this layer and press Duplicate Layer here. And the reason why we use that option is because we wanted to get this dialog box up. And that's because we want this option here to create a new document. I'm going to type in the name Displacement Map and press OK. And that will create an identical image on a new document. Now, as I mentioned, a displacement map shifts or displays pixels of one image using the luminance value of another. Now, just to get the luminance value, we need to make this image black and white because we only care about the luminance value or the brightness values. We don't care about the color information. So I'm going to unlock this background layer. I'm going to go to my adjustment layer icon here and select black and white. And now we can save it by going to File, Save As. And because we've already named a displacement map, all we need to do is just make sure that we're saving it as a Photoshop document. That's a PSD document here. If it's not, you can select your format here by selecting Photoshop. And just make sure that you save it in a folder that you want to. I'm OK with the images folder. And then I'm going to press Save. I'm going to press OK on this dialog box. And that's my displacement map. Now let's go back to our image and apply the displacement map. Now what we're going to do is just run through the displacement map and then after we've applied it, I'm going to explain what is actually done in a little bit more detail. So the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that our cover layer is selected because it's the cover layer, it's this white graphic here that we want to apply the displacement map to. And then now let's go to Filter, Distort and Displace. Now default is 10 and 10 and we'll just leave all the other settings as it is. Press OK and it's going to ask us where our displacement map is. Let's click on the file and then press open. I'm going to zoom in here just to see what it's actually done. I'm going to turn off the displacement map here by clicking this eyeball on here. And you can just focus on anywhere. Let's just say here while I turn it off and on. So you can see the displacement map sort of have a smudging effect on the graphic here. So that's on again and off again. So that's what a displacement map does. It uses the luminosity values of this displacement map here and applies it to this layer here, which results into this effect. Now, if that didn't make sense, don't worry. I'm going to explain it 
all in a little bit more detail right now. I'm going to fit this to screen by pressing Command-0 on my keyboard. That's Control-0 if you're on a PC. And I'm just going to bring up an explanation file. It's a file that I prepared earlier just to walk you through what a displacement map actually does behind the scenes. Now don't let the graph scare you. Don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it, so don't worry. Now remember, a displacement map tells Photoshop how much to shift the pixels based on the luminous value of the displacement map. Now you've probably seen a graph like this a lot of times. However, if you look very carefully, it's not your standard graph. Now I'm just going to grab my pen here so I can just make some scribbles to explain this a little bit better. I'm going to invoke my brush tool by pressing B on the keyboard and just select a brighter color so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Red would do fine. I'm going to press OK. And the difference here in this graph is that you can see this graph has got negative values on top. What you normally see is positive values here. Instead, the positive values are down here. And that's the difference between this graph and what you would normally see. So I'm just going to delete the scribbles here by pressing Command A on the keyboard, Control A if it's a PC, and then just press deleting. I'm going to deselect that as well. Now the next question is how much would the pixel shift based on the luminance value? Well, that depends on the luminance of the pixel. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use three luminance values. Black, which has a luminance value of 0. White, which has a luminance value of 255. And 50% gray, which has a luminance value of 128. Now, black has the maximum positive shift, while white has the maximum negative shift. I know that all sounds confusing, so let me make some more scribbles. By positive shift, what we mean is that see this x-axis here and then this y-axis here, black has the most positive shift. So this graph doesn't just end at 5. I'm just using 5 as a representation. It will just keep going. So if you've got pure black, which is a luminance value of 0, you've got the maximum shift here. Whereas if you've got pure white here, which is represented here, here and here, you've got the maximum shift here. And anything in between will shift less. Now, if you've got 50% gray, it doesn't displace anything at all. So again, I'm going to clear the scribble out. I'm not sure why my <laughs> handwriting is chicken scribble at the moment. I'm going to press Command A on the keyboard and delete it once again. And let's just review the dialog box here. You can see that the scale here is 10 and the vertical scale is 10 as well. So what do these mean here? These figures are actually percentages. Now the question is 10% of what? Well, it depends on your luminance value. Now let's take black as the first example. Now remember, black has a luminance value of 0. So remember, this is 50% gray here. And this is pure black, which is zero. I think my pen is lagging because I'm recording the screen. So apologies for the messy writing here. So remember the value of 50% gray is 128. So the luminance value available is 128. And similarly for white, the maximum value is 255. So the amount of luminance value is 128 which together will give us 256. So what has that got to do with these values here? Well, these 10% here is then multiplied by 128. I'm just going to make a new layer here again. Let's do the rough calculation. So if that's 10% of 128, that will give us a pixel value of 12.8, which is 13 pixels. So what we're saying is here that the maximum amount of displacement, if you got black as your pixel, it can move a maximum of 13 pixels horizontally. Now, because the vertical scale is also 10, it means that it can also move a maximum of 13 pixels vertically. And that will only happen if your pixel is pure black, a luminance value of zero. Now, similarly, you can do the same calculation with white. 
Now the maximum range of this goes from negative 999 all the way up to positive 999. So the maximum a pixel can shift is around about 1280 pixels. Let's just walk that maths through very quickly. I'm going to create a new layer. And remember, these are in percentages, so it's maximum of 999 divided by 100 times 128, which is the range from here. It's really squiggly. I really <laughs> apologize for my chicken scribbles here, but that's 128 here. So then the maximum value, if your pixels are pure black or pure white, is just under 1280. So that is horizontal scale and vertical scale. So I'm just going to clear that out. We don't need to see all these messy handwriting again. So if the pixels in the displacement map is black, then what we can see on this graph is that the pixels would move across and down. If the pixels on the displacement map is white, it will move up and across depending on how intense the luminance value is. Just to cement that knowledge, let's go back to our image here. And I'm going to zoom in by pressing Option on my keyboard and scroll wheel mouse up. That's Alt on the keyboard and scroll wheel mouse up if you're on a PC. And then I'm just going to turn off the displacement map and just watch it shift back. I'm going to turn it back on. Can you see that it's shifted to the right and down? And that's because if I go back to the displacement map, that what we're displacing here, a large portion of this is very dark. It's not pure black, so it's not shifting the maximum amount, but it is shifting according to the graph that we had. So if I look here, you can see here, if it's black, it will shift across and then down, which is exactly what we just saw. If we had a white displacement map, then it would go the opposite way. Now the next options are stretch to fit and tile. And this only applies if your displacement map is smaller than your actual image. In our case, it's identical to our original image. So these options won't matter. But if you are using a smaller displacement map, all it's asking is how do you want to repeat the displacement map? Do you want the displacement map to stretch to the size of your original image? Or do you want to tile it as in repeat it over and over? As I mentioned, because our displacement map is exactly the same size as our original image, this won't have any effect no matter which option we press. Now the undefined areas, the wraparound and the repeat edge pixels, it's easier to understand if I just demonstrate this instead of giving you a lengthy verbal explanation. So to do that, I'm going to go back to our image here. I'm going to fit it to screen and I'm going to select my background layer here. Let's go to filter, distort and shear. I'm going to make a S curve if you like. and just going to exaggerate that. Now you notice that in this filter, that it also has this wraparound and repeat edges. So at the moment, I've got wraparound. So here you can see the book is bending per the S-curve that I've just drawn here. But because it's bending, the edge of the book has been cut off. So the question is, what do you want to do with this area here? At the moment, I've selected wraparound, which means that whatever's missing here goes back onto itself and shows up here. So it's wrapping around it. So repeat edges means that whatever edge I have here, I'm going to repeat it until this S effect comes into play. So hopefully that makes it easier to understand what wraparound and repeat edge pixels are. I'm just going to cancel that because we don't have a use for the shear filter in this tutorial. So the next thing to do to make this graphic appear more integrated into this book is to make the shadows and the highlights of the book texture shine through the bright white of the graphic. So if I zoom in here by pressing Option on the keyboard and scroll wheel mouse up, that's Alt on the keyboard and scroll wheel mouse up if you're on a PC, you can see that there are flat white patches here, which doesn't look right, especially when we have a very nice texture underneath. So what we're going to do is to use the blend if command. So to bring that up, let's double click on this empty area on the cover layer here. 
Now to make use of the blend if sliders, we'll be using the underlying layer, which is this background layer here. I'm going to move this black slider from the left to the right, and you can see that the shadows are piercing through the white paint here. So I'm going to just feather that effect by breaking this tab apart. Let's press Option on the keyboard or Alt if you're on a PC. Click to break it and then just slide it across. You can obviously play around with this slider, go all the way to the right, and that will basically kill the effect. But just play around with it so you can get the hang of it. And you can also do the same with the left slider here. For me, something like this looks good. I'm going to zoom in a bit by pressing Option on the keyboard that's Alt on a PC and scroll wheel mouse up and just adjust the sliders a little bit more. So something like this, once we're happy with it, I'm going to press OK. I'm going to zoom out a bit, Option on the keyboard, Alt if you're on a PC and then just scroll wheel mouse down. So if I pan around by pressing spacebar on the keyboard and dragging on my mouse, you can see that the graphic is not only integrated, it's sort of smudged into the texture, giving it a more realistic feel. So if I turn off the displacement map here, you can see that it's much sharper. Even though I still got the blend diff, it doesn't look that realistic. If I turn off the blend if slider, just moving it all the way to the left, you can see that it really stands out as artificial. I'm going to Command Z that to undo. That's Control Z if you're on a PC. Just going to cancel out of that and turn on my displacement map. I'm going to fit it to screen by pressing Command Zero on the keyboard. That's Control Zero if you're on a PC. The last thing that we'll do is take care of this portion that's overlapping the thumb. So we can easily mask that out by pressing this mask icon here. Just make sure that you're on the cover layer before you do that. Once you're on there, press the mask layer here. With our brush tool selected, we can go here for the brush tool or B on the keyboard. I'm going to select black as my foreground color. Now at the moment, I've got it as my background color. I can press this little toggle switch or press X on my keyboard. I'm going to make sure that my opacity is at 100. My flow is at 100. I'm going to make my brush hardness all the way to 100 and a size of maybe 20 would do. 21 is okay. Maybe even a little bit bigger having seen the size of the brush and then just color that in. Now on a mask, black hides the effect and white reveals the effect. Now because we don't want this effect, we are painting black on our mask. I'm going to zoom out by pressing Option on my keyboard and scroll wheel mouse down. Now in the beginning, I mentioned that we'll use a smart object for this graphic here. And there was a good reason for that. Say that I want to change the title of my novel here. Now with a smart object, I can easily do that. All I need to do is enter into the smart object. I can do that by double click on that and that will bring me back to the graphic. Now it's a bit hard to see here, so I'm going to turn back on my black layer here. I'm going to press the visibility eyeball here and then just double click on my great novel and then just change it to my bestest novel. <laughs> and I'm going to confirm that by checking this check mark here. And I'm just going to move that to the center. Let's turn off this background and save it by pressing Command S on the keyboard. That's Control S if you're on a PC. Let's go back to our image to see the effect. And there it is, <laughs> my bestest novel. And that's how you can realistically mock up the cover of this book in Photoshop. Now let's review what we've learned here. I'm going to switch this graphic layer off. So we started off with this image here. And because the book was on an angle, we needed to remove the perspective from it. We went to our perspective crop tool and then pasted the straightened image back onto this image here. We then made a new layer so we can make our graphic onto it. To make it editable, we made it a smart object so we can make changes however we see fit later. 
Our graphic consisted of text and some graphics here and we just used the black as a background just so we can see what we've done and when we were finished we turned the background layer off and then save our cover file and that was reflected onto this image here. Now the effect looked great at a distance but when we zoomed in it was pretty flat so we used the displacement map to shift the pixels of the graphic to match the contours of the texture of the book. To give the feeling of depth we used blend if to make these shadows pop from underneath the graphic. Lastly we masked out the graphic from the thumb here. We also went in depth about what displacement map did behind the scenes so you can level up your skills as a photoshopper. Now if you want to continue to level Level up your Photoshop skills, make sure you check out my other videos so you don't miss out a trick or three.